welcome to the 13 o'clock podcast and we're back again for our third episode and today we're doing we're talking about like uh two different subjects but they both have a common theme we thought we would do kind of a weird memory kind of theme what you got for me well the first topic actually was uh the idea of a facebook friend of ours who suggested that we do it and i had never heard of it but apparently it's a big thing uh called the mandela effect um, like I said, I had never heard of it, but when I looked it up, I guess it was a big thing on the internet and everyone's talking about it and there's websites and whatever. And what's the other one? Uh, the other one is going to be, we're talking about like a weird reincarnation kind of case or what could possibly be a reincarnation okay. case. All right. You, you, uh, you lay it on me and, uh, I'll just sit back here and vape and throw my two sets in. <laughs> so okay. I'm, I'm tired tonight. That's oh okay. Well, we, you know. All right. No, it's okay. No, I'm just joking around. Okay. Go ahead. Well, okay, If uh, for those of you who don't know, the Mandela Effect is actually, it's not just a case of misremembering something, which we all do. It's actually a case of where a whole bunch of people remember something incorrectly in the same exact way. For example, uh, probably one of the most common ones has to do with the children's book and cartoon, The Berenstain Bears. Now... Many, many, many people insist that it's the Berenstein Bears, or at least it was when they were growing up. Um, I can't really speak to this because I always remember it being Berenstain. So all you people that remember being Berenstain, I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> well, hold on, hold on. Ex- explain this. Uh, explain this effect. What, what? I mean, what are they saying? This is some kind of quantum anomaly. Are they saying that the ch- the past is changing? Well, I, there are some different paranormal theories. There are uh, also some skeptical theories, which we will get into. Right. The paranormal theories basically boil down to, uh, one, these people that remember it, quote unquote, incorrectly, are coming from a different time stream or a different dimension. Uh, the second one is that someone is changing the past for whatever reason. Okay. Even though it always seems to be minor things. Changing the past. Yeah. Okay. Um, or erasing the past and replacing right. it with something else. Or that there's a glitch in the matrix, as the saying goes. Okay. That we all live like in a holodeck kind of universe. Well, what other examples did, do, do, do they give to support this? That you, you know what I mean? You have to have more than one example. Yeah. It can't just be about bears. Right. Okay. Well, I was going to say, the actually the phrase, the name Mandela Effect, was coined by a quote-unquote paranormal consultant okay. named Fiona Broom. All right. And she first coined it because she was at a convention and she was talking about to someone about um, Nelson Mandela, like you do. Mm -hmm. And she thought that he had died in prison in the 1980s. And this other person said he also believed that Nelson Mandela had died in prison in the 1980s. Now, Nelson Mandela did not die until 2013. Okay. He was out of prison for a very long time. But apparently, when she posted about it on her blog or whatever, a shit ton of people wrote to her and said, Oh my God, I also thought Nelson Mandela died in prison in the 1980s. So, and as this Mandela effect thing kind of got into the public consciousness, a lot of other people started coming forward, remembering things like the Berenstain Bear thing. Um, there's like a lot of movie ones too, like mo- misremembered movie quotes and stuff like that. Give, give me some um, examples. What, the movie quotes? Or just movie, the movie stuff. Um, well, you know, some of these are kind of not that big a deal. Like, a lot of people remember, you know, obviously the famous line from Star Wars being, Luke, I am your father, when Mm -hmm. it's actually, no, I am your father. Right. Um, also the, uh, Forrest Gump, the famous Forrest Gump line, life is like a box of chocolates. Mm -hmm. In the movie, he actually says, life was like a box of chocolates. Um, Jaws, I think there's one from Jaws. Which uh, I think the big, the one everyone quotes is, we're going to need a bigger boat, but it's actually you're going to need a bigger boat. Okay. Um, there was actually another from Star Wars. It wasn't a line, but, and this one kind of freaked me out a little bit because C-3PO, right? Mm-hmm. In the first movie. Um, and C-3PO, everybody thinks of him as all gold, right? Yeah. And I even had the action figure when I was little and he's all gold. But uh, I was looking up Mandela Effect stuff on YouTube and they pointed, they said, no, in the first Star Wars movie, A New Hope, one of his legs 
from the knee down is silver. Yeah. And I remember it being that way, though. And I didn't remember that. Okay. So when I went back and watched it, I was like, oh, look at that. So that kind of yeah. weirded me out. Yeah, one of his shins was silver. One of his shins was as though he had like a replacement part. It was like part. a replacement part, right. But it wasn't like that in Empire, right? I think they fixed it later on. He also had a dent in his forehead for a while. Yeah. And I think at the end of New Hope, they fixed that dent. Well, now, see, I asked, I've asked, asked about Empire because I'm pretty sure... No, actually, Return of the Jedi is what I'm thinking of. Mm-hmm. Somebody posted a picture from Return of the Jedi where um, C-3PO was sitting on the throne in the Ewok village. Uh-huh. And one of the legs was silver there, too. It was? So I don't know if it actually was or if somebody shopped that or... Hmm. I don't know. They had to but, go back and look at yeah, it. Yeah, that one did kind of weird me out. Okay. Um, and also, there... Um, <laughs> this is a funny one. A lot of people remember that there was a painting of Henry VIII with a turkey leg in his hand, like a famous painting. Yeah, and there there was no... (laughs) No. Right. But you know what? I remember where that came from. Where did it come from? That came from some ad or a commercial when I was a kid that had that famous painting of him, that portrait of him, but he had a turkey leg. I remember he appeared in Bewitched one time with a turkey leg in his hand. Remember that when when, when Uncle Arthur had him <laughs> appear. Right. <laughs> what is with him and the turkey leg? Paul Lind. <laughs> there was no painting of yeah. Henry the Eighth with a turkey leg. Okay. I think that came. There should have been though. There should have been. <laughs> I'm not saying that. Yeah. There was no painting of right. not not you know, but I think that came from that came from an ad or something like that because right. I do remember that turkey leg being a thing, and um. You know, there's other stuff too, like other celebrity deaths, which, you know, we've all experienced the kind of thing where somebody dies and we're like, isn't that bitch dead already? Well, you know. Right, yeah. You know, so there's all kind of that. Mandela oh, effect. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and this one this one is actually kind of weird um, for all of you Bible scholars out there. So, you know how there's like a kind of a popular thing, like the lion lying down with the lamb or whatever? Yeah. And, even, and if you look on Google search, there's like a ton of pictures of it, right? Mm-hmm. Except that shit's not in there. Not in the Bible. It's a wolf. Lying down with the lamb. Okay. Okay. There's two quotes from Isaiah. All right. Like there's a lion in there, but the lion and the lamb are not together. Okay. So, um, so some people think their Bible got changed. Okay. At some point. Cause they're like, why do all these people do artwork of a little lion and a, a lamb? A lion and a lamb laying down. Laying it's down not it's not, it's a wolf and a lamb. Okay. But, uh, so I thought that was a little bit weird. And, um, and there's also, there was also a thing where this, I don't know if this counts or not. But apparently there's this island, uh, it's out by Australia somewhere, like in the Coral Sea, called Sandy Island. And it appeared on maps up until about the 19th century. And then all of a sudden, um, they started, like, ships started going by and flying, and there's no island there. So it was a totally invented island? So they're not sure if there used to be an island there, and then it sank or some shit. I don't know, right, or yeah. there was a volcano. Or if the original people who mapped it, like, because it's been mapped more than once. Okay. So they don't know if the original people that mapped it, like, saw something else that wasn't an island. Well, wait or... a minute. Hold on. This is off the coast of what now? Australia, but far. It's okay. in the Coral Sea. All right. So it's not near the, the coastline. No, no, no. It's far. Could it be that someone m- mismapped it and others copied it? I guess that's possible. Saying, well, there must it must have been there because it's on this because it's on this map, and they just were like too lazy. Is to... it, are are there any surviving copies of that map with that island on it? As far as I know, there are. That's why people are wondering where that island went to. Huh. Wow. But like you said, it might have just that it might have been might have been an error of some sort. Yeah. We have to look more into that. Or Sandy like island. I said, there. Yeah, it's called Sandy Island. There's a Wikipedia. Uh, it must have been it must have been a tiny island though. Yeah, I'm sure it okay. wasn't really that big. Like I said, maybe it sunk because of a volcano that'd be weird who knows that would be weird wouldn't it yeah it's atlantis <laughs> or it was like really big sea monster like nah. the back of a really big sea monster nah. it must it, you're no fun it must have been, it must have been a, an error in mapping yeah and then they just kept copying that same error yeah here's the thing here's or like you said maybe something changed on the seabed yeah and, that's, it, and you know, it sank a few feet and i you think can't, that's more like it's not visible than right. them than people like erasing an island right Okay, now here's one that's kind of weird that this, I don't know if this counts either, but this kind of wigged me out. Um, so when I was a kid or teenager, one of my favorite shows was that British uh, sitcom, The Young Ones. Yeah. From the 80s. 
And I noticed that someone had posted a YouTube video under Mandela Effect about the young ones. And I said, oh, I got to see this because I've seen all the episodes like a million times. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so I would know. Right. But here's the weird thing. Now, it says in this video that there was, because you know on the young ones, there were four housemates, Mm -hmm. right? It was Rick, Mike, Neil, and Vivian. Now, this person said, no, there's a fifth one. But you never see his face because his hair is always hanging over his face. And he's always like in the background Mm -hmm. and he's never mentioned. He's never referred to. And I was like, that's bullshit. I never saw that. Right. And like I looked at the stills that this person had posted on the video and I was like, they photoshopped that. Come on. I don't remember that. So then I went back and watched the original shows again. And that guy is in there. Yeah. He showed it to me. It's weird. It's hard to see, though. Well, a couple of them. A couple of them, he's like kind of in the background or kind of off to the side, but one of them, he's like he's kind of in the. So there's a fifth one. They meant, there's a fifth one they hid the whole time. Pretty much. Okay. And actually, it's weird because Ben Elton, who was like one of the creators of the show, he apparently said he had no fucking idea what they were talking about. There were only four people. Right. But one of the other writers or producers or whatever said that, oh yeah, well we used to put funny shit in the background. Um, you know, just for shits and giggles. Yeah. And we, you know, he's like, we want to, we were going to put this guy in the background and like, just never have anyone talk to him or refer to him or anything. And he never talks or moves and, you know, just never mentioned. He's like, but we forgot to do it in every episode. (laughs) So actually, so if you look, so some of the episodes have, so some of the, uh, he's definitely in, Mm -hmm. uh, the one called bomb. He's kind of sitting in the living room, like kind of on the floor and he's in, the one, uh, he's in the one called Oil. I think he's like in the back corner. And he's in, um, I think the one is called Interesting, which is weird because this one, he's really obvious. Like there's a shot of the staircase and then this old man like comes out of the closet or whatever. And the guy is like sitting right there, like in the foreground. Hmm. Like, but you can't see his face. He looks like Cousin It kind of like right, he has yeah. his hair just over his face. And then he has this kind of black you know, poncho kind of thing on. Right. And he's sitting right there. Like, I've got pictures of it. It's That's like, not paranormal, though. No, no, okay. no. It's just okay. it's just weird that... You didn't notice it. That I never noticed it. Okay. And you'd think that I would have noticed... I mean, some of them, it's probably right. easy to avoid. Now, wasn't there wasn't there one about uh, the ta- the Chinese tank? That's right. A lot of people, um, the Tiananmen Square, like the famous photo of the guy standing in front of the tank, apparently a lot of people have a really vivid memory of him getting run over by the tank. Yeah, I never did. I never had that memory. Which I, he did not. Right. Actually, and actually, if you go back and watch the whole video, he stands in front of the tank. The tank stops. He climbs up on the tank and talks to the guy in the tank. Yeah. And then he gets back down. And then the tank kind of goes off to the side and stops again. And then he just kind of stands there. Mm-hmm. And then eventually... He walks he off. He just kind of wanders off. Yeah, like other people come and he wanders off. Right. So, you know, that guy's fine. He didn't mm-hmm. get run over. But apparently a lot of people have really vivid memories of the guy getting run over no he didn't get run over he did not get run over no so like i said some people have some weird theories about why this is and what i mean i don't think there's anything paranormal to this wasn't there one about the movies jaws I already said that. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay you did. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, not not the Jaws. I'm talking about that the James Bond movie with oh, the guy Jaws. Oh my God! Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was from what movie was it from? Moonraker. Moonraker, right? Moonraker. Okay, so the guy Richard Keel that played Jaws. There's a famous scene of him, and then this girl comes up. She's got little. She's he, got braids, right? Well, he was in a he was in a uh, a cable car. Yeah, you remember? Did the cable car than... fall? I think it did. I think the cable car fell and he survived the crash. Right. And when he climbed out, there was a uh, little chick there with braids in her hair and uh, glasses. She was like a nerdy chick and she smiles at him and they walk off. Right. And evidently that becomes his girlfriend. Right. But it didn't really make sense. Everyone remembers her having braces. Having braces. You can probably tell it better than me. Yeah. Um. Here's the thing. And, and actually this was parodied a lot like after Moonraker came out. So apparently there's this big famous scene of Richard Keel as Jaws, and you know, he has those metal teeth, smiling, and then the nerdy girl smiling back at him, and her having braces. 
But if you watch the movie now, she does not have braces. Right. And there are no pictures of her with braces. And I think I remember it, her having braces. See, everyone does. Right. Like this one, this one I can't really have an opinion on because I saw Moonraker so long ago that I didn't even remember it. The scene only made sense if she had break. And braces. see, this this was kind of the weirdest example for me because when I watched the scene on YouTube, like yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It's just it's just a little cute girl smiling mm-hmm. at this guy with metal teeth. Yeah. And and it was weird because later, like even in foreign countries and shit. There was, I think, was it Finland or somewhere like that? Like, did a commercial Mm -hmm. where they parodied that. Mm -hmm. Like, with the girl with braces, like, smiling. And why would they do that? And that was, like, a long time ago, like, nearer to where, to when Moonraker came out. Now, why would they do that if she didn't really have braces? Now, is everyone just remembering braces when there weren't any? I don't know. Or were they removed later? No, they weren't removed later, no. Or what? I think it was, I think it was Suggestion. Maybe he smiled, and there were sil- he had silver teeth, and then she smiled, and she was a nerd. She didn't have silver teeth, but it somehow it was it was suggested that she did. Yeah, and that's what you saw, kind of like something a mentalist would do. That's you know? pretty weird, though, when you like think the about power it. of suggestion. But when I'm pretty, sh- I think I remember that scene, and I think I remember her having braces. I can picture her; she kind of looked like Wendy from uh, from Wendy's. You know, yeah, the, yeah, that is Pippi Longstocking like. kind of. Yeah, she like yeah, that. she had like little braids and she right. was, like she was cute, but she was like a nerdy. Yeah, like nerdy. She wasn't a little kid. She's probably in her twenties. Yeah, she wasn't little. Right. But um, but like you said, that was probably that's the weirdest one because that scene doesn't really make any sense if she doesn't have braces. I mean, it's no. funnier with braces because you'd be like, hey, I have metal teeth. You have metal teeth. I guess it was just the power of suggestion, and it seemed to it seemed to be that everyone else. Got that same suggestion yeah. because when they parroted it, they put braces they on They put braces on her. Yeah. And everyone remembers yeah. her having braces. And she didn't. And she didn't. But like you Weird. said, it, do- it doesn't make any sense when she doesn't have braces to me. Because they don't even talk to each other. They just smile at each other and then right. he's like, hey. And then they take, you know, they right. hold hands and like walk off into the sunset or whatever. And then, yeah. And, you know, I don't know. But that, does, that doesn't make any sense. But, um, so, so what do you think? It, it's, here's the weird thing. Like, I don't think there's anything particularly paranormal going on, but it's still really fascinating to me how people's memories can go awry in exactly the same way. Like, so many people's memories. Yeah. That's a pretty freaky kind of thing. Right. I mean, I I don't... That's kind of a cool idea that somehow the past can change a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? As if it's... As if the past isn't fixed. But you got to come up with some better examples than what they're given. Yeah, it, it's, it's weird not, because it never seems to be... It's never anything major. No. Not really. And you would think, though, that even something small, had it changed in the past, could have big ramifications. Like, for instance, let's say in that scene from Moonraker, the girl smiled and she did have braces. Right. Okay, and, it, and there was braces originally in that scene. If that became popular enough, let's say that actress then went on to make commercials of her with braces. Okay? Oh, I see what and you're getting And let's say at. if those commercials, okay, brought her to stardom and she ended up becoming a superstar. And then she ends up giving birth to some children that end up being, you know, superstar children or something. So, you know what I mean? A, a small thing could have big ramifications. Butterfly I don't think, effect. Like a butterfly effect. So I don't think... I don't think little things in the past are changing. Doesn't make sense. It would impact too much. Yeah. On, on the present. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, some people are saying, "Oh, it's like all people from alternate time streams are remembering things wrong and stuff like that." And like I said, going back to the Berenstain Bears thing, like I said, all y'all fuckers from get out of my time stream that just remember with an E because it never had an E. It was always an A. Yeah. And I, you know why I remember that? Because it should have an E because that's a more common, I mean, right. S-T-E-I-N is a much more common, uh, you know, name ending than mm. Stain. Who the fuck is Baron Stain? What the fuck kind of name is that? I don't right? know. But so, you remembered it that way. Well, I remembered it because it was unusual. Right. And see, I think what's happening is that people are remembering it as Baron Steen because that's the more common iteration of that name. Right. But I remembered it because it was weird. And it's always something that you remember from a long time ago. Yeah. And that, that's proof that it's your memory. Because there yeah. were little things that I remembered happening when I was a kid. Went back and looked at it, in, like say in a movie or a video, yeah. and it didn't rem- it and didn't it, happen the way I remembered it. No. 
and I have the same thing happen too. It's like I see movies much later, and I was like, you know, right. stuff happened in there that I remember. I remembered it wrong, or I'm mixing up two different movies, right? Or you know, some kind of thing like that. But um, the you know the weird thing I I was kind of weirded out by a couple of them. Like I did not remember uh, C three PO having one silver leg. I, didn't I remember that. that. But see, the reason I didn't remember that is one because I had the toy, and the toy mm. was all gold. Right. And two, like you wouldn't really notice it. Like most of the time he was walking around in the desert. It was subtle. And the sand would kind of reflect on the thing and kind of make them all look gold. So you wouldn't really be, you know, you're not really looking for it. Well, one, one way to and, prove, prove it is go back, go back and listen to a song that you used to think was really cool, but you haven't heard it in a long time. Yeah. Something that you remember from the 80s. Not one of your favorite songs, but one of the ones that you didn't really listen to that much. Right. From an obscure band. It's going to sound different than you remember. Oh, it. yeah. Uh, and because I think... Uh, it's not going to be as cool as you remembered it. <laughs> no. No. Some things are, but not very many yeah. things, I'm sad to say. And actually, um, I was watching a TED Talk the other day by Elizabeth Loftus, who's kind of... Uh, she works a lot in uh, memory and stuff like that. And she's saying that memory is not... It's, you know, obviously, it's not like a recording that you can just play back. It's actually constructive. when you When you remember something you're not remembering the actual thing. You're remembering your last memory of it. Right. And the farther away you get from it, the more reconstructive that memory becomes, the more shit you add on to it. You know, so that's the thing. It's like, I kind of feel like, like I said, most of these are pretty minor. And another one that people remember, and this, this one is stupid because I've never met anyone who ever remembered this. Apparently, there are a, a large percentage of people who think that there are 51 or 52 states. Huh. Well, there are 52 and cards. There are 52 cards. Yeah. Well, see, some people think, I don't know, it, and I think it's because they have a misperception, one, that there were 50 states before Alaska and Hawaii got added. Right. Um, if they think there are 51, maybe they think Puerto Rico counts, or they're going to make Puerto know. Rico one or something like that. But then I was kind of like... Didn't they ever learn that song, 50 Nifty United States? I never learned that song. I learned it in elementary school. Oh, not, not me. And that is why, to this day, I can still remember all the mm. state names in alphabetical order. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because that's how that song goes. And so I don't know why anyone would think they were... I mean, you know, I could see if you're from another country yeah. or something like that. You know, fair enough. Well, but, the, uh, the Mandela effect's interesting. But I just think... It, it is an interesting... Yeah. It's, it's interesting, but I... Um, we, we need more evidence. You need more yeah. evidence. I'm not totally convinced on it. It is just interesting, though. I just think those are tricks of the tricks of the memory and, and suggestion. Another thing, and actually I talked to you about this one on Saturday. A lot of people um, remember Chick-fil-A mm -hmm. as spelled C-H-I-C-F-I-L-A. Uh-huh. Now, it's actually... Now, here's the weird thing. I remembered it being spelled C-H-I-K. Yeah, that's how I remember. And no, it's not because of the cows, like the misspelled right, yeah. cows, because I remember being a kid and being pissed off because it wasn't spelled correctly. Huh. And, you know, yeah, the, they had the cows later on with the misspelled signs, and that was like a big thing, and I can see how maybe you would think. Yeah. But no, because I remember being a kid and being mad that it was spelled with just a K, and I said it should be C-H-I-C-K. Okay. But we were driving by a billboard for Chick-fil-A just this Saturday and it is C-H-I-C-K it's spelled correctly it is and I was like when okay. did that happen <laughs> I don't know I, didn't I remember it just I, I, I never really paid attention being a K. to it I didn't pay attention and even to when it. I did a Google search because I said maybe it was just a K and then everybody complained like I did like why is it spelled wrong I said okay we're going to spell it right but even when I did a Google search and I put C-H-I-K they were like did you mean C-H-I-C-K <laughs> you dumbass and I was like, oh, I guess they did spell it right the whole time. I guess they did spell it right the whole yeah. time. But, um, so, you know, whatever. I know yeah. some people think, and it's kind of cool to speculate that it might be a glitch in the Matrix or alternate yeah, time streams or something like that. But I don't know. I just, it, You know, it'd be different if people were remembering, like, wars and shit that didn't happen. Or, like, some people yeah. remember wars and the other people didn't remember wars. But uh, it's never anything like that. It's always like just minor entertainment shit, right. mostly like from your from people's childhoods. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah. It's 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 interesting. It's just something you got to keep an eye on. You know, I'm gonna yeah. you just got to keep an eye on that. And until they come up with something better, I'm just gonna say no. 
Oh, and did you, yeah. did you remember Curious George having a tail? No, I don't think Curious George had a tail. Did okay, he? Okay, no. Yeah, no. A lot of people remember him having a tail. No. But, and, and uh, all the Curious George costumes, they may have a tail, but I mm-hmm. said, oh, well, the only reason that the costume has a tail is because if it didn't have a tail, it would look like a bear. Okay, okay. Although you'd think that he would have a tail because he's a monkey. He's not a chimpanzee, right? What kind of monkey is he I thought he was a chimpanzee. Oh, maybe he is supposed to be a chimpanzee. Right. They call him a monkey. Chimpanzee's an ape, though. Whatever. Whatever. That's not being pedantic. (laughs) All right. So uh, it's almost coming up on the half hour mark. So I guess we're going to stop and take a break. And then we will come back and talk about our second topic, which is super creepy. So we'll be back in just a minute. I would like to take a second and thank Subculture Corsets and Clothing for sponsoring Project iRadio and my show. While listening to my podcast, please take a second and visit their website at www.subculturecorsets.com. They carry a wide selection of corsets, rockabilly, gothic, steampunk, and pinup clothing, shoes, and accessories. Again, their website is subculturecorsets.com, or if you're in the Jacksonville, Florida area, stop by their store in the Avenues Mall. And if you like to save money, use the discount code 13 o'clock when checking out and save 10% off your entire order. By the way, if you're a curvy girl, Subculture did not forget about you. They carry size 4 to 4X, and guys, they have men's clothing and shoes as well. So go shop at subculturecorsets.com now and use the discount code 13 o'clock for a 10% discount. Okay, and we're back. Now, since we're doing um, kind of a weird memory kind of theme, I wanted to do something about, like, a creepy reincarnation case. Yeah, you told me a little bit about this one. I've never heard this one before. Yeah, I had neither, but I actually kind of looked it up. Now, the reason I wanted to do this was because, um, if you'll remember on our first episode, um, we talked about The Entity, which was uh, written, the book was written by Frank DeFolitta. Now, Frank DeFolitta also wrote a book called Audrey Rose. And I had actually thought that Audrey Rose was based on an actual reincarnation case, but it's not really... Um, he actually just got the idea because apparently his six-year-old son one day could play the piano when he hadn't been able to before. Weird. I didn't know about <laughs> so, that. So that's what he says that's anyway. That's what he claims. Okay. That's what he claims anyway. But um, so that kind of gave him the idea. And then he started talking to, I think he started talking to this guy who in the 60s was like a big uh, advocate of reincarnation studies and did a, like a lot of case studies of it and stuff like that. Um, his name's Ian Stevenson, Dr. Ian Stevenson, I think. And uh, this was one of the cases that they're all kind of creepy, but this one kind of uh, creeped me the hell out. Okay. But uh, what it is, it was, the, okay, it was 1957 and it was England. And there were this, there was this family and they lived in this town, I think it's called Hexham. Yeah. In Northumberland. And they were, um, John Pollock and his wife. Now they had two daughters. Joanna was 11 and Jacqueline was six. In May of 1957, the two little girls and their little friend, who was a little boy, they were walking to church and they all three of them got hit by a car and they all died. Okay. Right. So, you know, obviously very horrible and very scary. And here was the weird thing, though. Now, John Pollock, the dad, he was a devout Catholic. Um, but he kind of believed in reincarnation. Now, his wife got pregnant about mm-hmm. a year after their daughters died. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the gynecologist said it was a, it was just a single baby. Okay. But the dad insisted that it was going to be twin girls Uh and that their two daughters Mm -hmm. were going to be reincarnated. And uh, in October of 1958... So he just insisted this? Yeah. Okay. Based on what? He had a feeling? He just had a feeling. Okay. He had a feeling. Um, And the doctor said, no, it's just one kid. All right. But in October 1958, his wife gave birth and it was indeed twin girls. Okay. Weird. So I'm going to sit back here and vape and have you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> now, here was the weird thing. The twins were um, monozygotic, meaning, you know, they both came from one egg. Okay. But one of them had one. She had a birthmark on her forehead that corresponded to a scar that one of the dead daughters had. Okay. Like one of the dead daughters, I think the older one had a scar on her forehead from where she fell off her bicycle. Okay. 
And one of the babies had a birthmark on her forehead that kind of corresponded like a white spot. All right. She also had a birthmark on her hip, just like the hmm. dead girl. Did. Weird. Now, um, so here was the thing. There was there was also like a bunch of other weird shit that happened. Like the the babies were not raised um, where, you know, where they had been living when the when the daughters died, the original daughters died. They moved away when the twins were still babies. Hold on, hold on. I'm confused. So the the new set of twins are being raised in a different location. Yeah, the they they moved okay. when they were still babies. Okay. To a different town. All right. <clears throat> now, when the twins were four years old, mm-hmm. the parents took the twins back to the town that they had originally lived in, you know, when their daughters died. Okay. When the daughters died. Okay, but these these little girls had never been there? They had been there, but only, only, si- very only when they were like, okay. until they were like three months or six months or something like that. Okay. And yet, when they drove into the town, Hexham, where they were from originally, the twins insisted that they wanted to go to this particular park, and mm-hmm. they described the park, they described landmarks, mm-hmm. they knew where the their old house was without having to be told they knew where everything was in the town so they had all the landmarks they knew where everything was yeah okay and they knew the name of the park they, they wanted left, to go to they left there at 6 months of age more something or less. like that they were okay. still babies yeah so they could have known they were still babies um so but the original daughters had lived there is that is that the original daughters had lived there that's okay. where the that's where the original daughters had been killed okay in uh, Hexham was the original town. Then they moved to another town later called Whitley Bay. All right. So, but when they went back. And um, also, they... Now, apparently the parents had never told the twins mm-hmm. about the dead daughters. Okay. Um, they had all their stuff put away, like in the attic or whatever. And they never brought it out. They never talked about them or anything like that. And yet, still, the, the twins would ask for particular toys that the dead daughters had had. All right. And when these toys were brought out, they knew the names of all the dolls and the stuffed animals and all that kind of stuff that the dead daughters had had. Okay. Um, There was also, and this was the creepiest thing (laughs) to me. This was pretty fucking creepy. Mm. But um, there was also a thing where the two little girls would, because they said their personalities were kind of similar to, uh, to the original daughters also, but they said that the two little girls would kind of play this weird game where the, where one of them would lay with her head in the other one's lap. And then the one whose lap the girl was in, she would say, you're bleeding out your eyes. That's where the car hit you. Weird. Like she would say shit like that. And they didn't know the, of of the prior. Evidently not. They didn't know their other sisters. No, okay. evidently not. Because it was, I mean, they were born, you know, almost two years after. After it had happened. After it had happened. Okay. And the weirdest thing, too, was when they were about four or five, mm-hmm. they were playing outside and their mom, like, heard them screaming or something like that. And she went out there mm-hmm. and they were, like, clutching each other mm-hmm. and screaming. There was a car idling. It wasn't moving. Right. But it was on and it was idling and the headlights were on. And they kept saying, the car is going to get us. The car is going to get us. <laughs> and they were like wigging out. Weird. Now, the weirdest thing is that that incident, like them thinking mm-hmm. the car was going to get them, mm-hmm. that was like the last thing. They said after they turned five, mm-hmm. they no longer remembered anything. They no longer, you know, apparently had any kind of connection. Weird. With, with their... Um, oh, so, you know, I, I think the doctor that worked on this... His theory was that once kids turned five, you know, they no longer had access to this other world or these other memories or whatever. Because it seems like once they got to the age of five, Mm -hmm. they no longer said anything about past lives. What's the name of this case? Does it have a name? The Pollock Twins. It's just generally called the Pollock Twins. Yeah. Could it have been, could could it have, excuse me, could it have had anything to do with epigenetics? You know, that's a good question. There could be some kind of... Maybe there was some kind of weird... Well, 
instead of inheriting the memories from the sisters, that would have been impossible. What if they inherited the memories from the traumatized mother? Hmm. That they were remembering the, the mother's memories. That they were, it was passed down through her DNA. You know, yeah. epigenetics is, you know. Right. You might, be able, you, you might be able to explain it better than me, but it's like they say that mothers who experience certain traumas while they're around the pregnancy time can pass those that those traumas on to the child. Right. There's evidently some some scientific evidence to back this up. People that survived, say like 9/11, the kids when they came out, they had uh, higher levels of stress and they were more I aggressive had heard and things that. like that. Yeah. I wonder did they actually I should actually would look this up one of these days. Cuz animals if... inherit memory. True. Why can't children inherit a certain yeah. amount of memory and then when they get old enough the brain takes over and, and their they own they don't need those need it anymore. they don't need yeah. inherited memories isn't that interesting now i wonder if i actually think and i don't know if you told me this or if some or if i read this somewhere else but when you said about 911 i did i do remember reading that some people said that not only were the kids have higher stress and things like that but they also had like nightmares about planes planes and fires and things falling right. on them and yeah it does it wouldn't surprise me if if you know humans do inherit certain amounts of memories because when i was a little kid i remembered things that my dad said had happened to my granddad about falling over in a tractor my dad and his dad fell over in a tractor one time yeah and when i was about that age four or five i asked my dad you remember the time we fell over in the tractor oh that's yeah. spooky yeah and he's like, no, we never fell over in a tractor. And I said, yeah, we fell over in a tractor, but we were all right. And I can remember remembering it, but it, it, it's just a weird way of, you know, I can't really explain it. Of us fall, riding along in a tractor and the tractor hitting in a, hitting a uh, uh, what do you call it, like a ditch. Mm -hmm. And it turning over on its side and we fell out and we laughed. It wasn't a real big tractor. It was right. a smaller tractor. And evidently that happened to my granddad and my dad. It never happened to me. <laughs> yeah. that's pretty awesome yeah so I, I, maybe I just inherited that through my dad maybe, maybe I, so maybe, maybe those were my dad's memories yeah not, not my grandfather's memories wouldn't that be something if people got, I mean that would explain like yeah. a lot of this kind of weird because there's yeah. also the case and I'm looking at it right now there's also the case of a little kid named Gus Taylor who claimed this he's like the kid who was his own grandpa similar yeah. kind of thing like yeah. he had memories of his grandpa and he kept saying he was his grandpa grandpa augie and uh he said when he was um he when he was 18 months old and he was still wearing diapers mm -hmm. his dad was changing his diapers and the baby said i used to change your diapers yeah like he was his grandpa <laughs> like he was yeah. his father yeah evidently i used to say things like that too <laughs> <laughs> my dad was trying to get the uh, get the keys in the door, and I was in a stroller, and I went, "God damn, son of a bitch!" <laughs> and I was a little kid in a stroller, oh my and my God, dad looked awesome. at me because my dad used to say the same thing, you know. And my mother was like, "Where did you hear that from?" You know. There's, I'm sorry, but there's like nothing funnier than kids swearing. Yeah, God damn, son of a bitch! He couldn't get the keys in the door; it was dark. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Now I, you know, I do have to say, like, I don't know. Like, actually, I'm kind of glad that you brought up that epigenetics thing about, like, memories somehow being transferred through yeah. the DNA. Because I think that's actually more likely than this kind of, like, soul reincarnating. And I think it's more likely. Yeah. Because yeah. it happens in other animals. Why wouldn't it happen in humans? Right. We're animals. Yeah. That's kind of a good... And, and maybe it was just a temporary memory that you inherit for survival reasons, you know. And maybe it's kind of a vestigial from other ancestors right. that we have. Right. And then you get to a certain age and those memories are get superseded yeah. by your own memories. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that because, look, there are whole websites of kids saying creepy shit. Yeah, well, kids, kids say and do creepy they shit. They say creepy <laughs> yeah. shit yeah. all the time. They say random shit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what if some of that shit is true? What if some of these kids, like, what if your kid came to you and said something like, that's how I died and I saw blah, blah, yeah. blah. You know, they do say shit like that. Well, there was some kid that evidently... Uh, he knew everything about World a uh, World War Two aircraft. That's and right. Remember that That's, one, I don't uh, know. Well, James Leininger, I think yeah. his name is. Yeah, he was. Yeah, one of the guys. and that was a yeah. weird case. And then he claimed to be a certain guy who died in a uh, World War Two. That's right. He was and, a fighter pilot. Uh, yeah, off of an aircraft carrier. Yeah. And he was a little kid, 
Yeah. And, and he knew everything about that aircraft carrier and the aircraft. Uh, well, seemingly everything. You know, we didn't interview the kid. And, and for somehow, um, what they do? The, James Leninger, is that his name? Yeah. What does it say there? Um, it, it says, yeah, yeah, yeah because okay. these were kind of like famous cases. Mm. So apparently when he was a little kid, he knew the name of the pilot that he used to be, Okay, which was uh, James Houston Jr. Mm. He knew the name of the ship that he had mm. served on. Um, he knew the name of his co-pilot. Um, and he knew that he had been shot down at Iwo Jima. Okay. And there's no way he could have known this. As a little, he was a little kid. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently he was a, he was a little kid. And, um... Did they reunite him with some of his friends from the air from 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 uh, from from the aircraft carrier? I think carrier? they did, yeah. And he knew their names. Yeah. He didn't even have to. He didn't even have. He goes, oh, I, remember, I know him, and then he would tell his name. I know that guy. Yeah. 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 Weird. How old was he? Um. Well, let's see. At that I don't time, think it eight, says nine, on something maybe. I think he actually. I think he was younger. than younger that. Younger than that. I think he might have been younger than that. But um, there was also another case like uh, this kid named Edward Austrian, mm-hmm. and um. He had like all these weird phobias about rain, and also he um, he had a lot of throat problems. Wait, like, wait! Before we go on, what that kid, uh, the last one with the air, the aircraft carrier yeah. kid, he wasn't related to that guy, so that couldn't have been had anything to do with epigenetics. Right. That must be some. That's a certain amount of evidence towards towards actual reincarnation. Maybe. That's true. Yeah, I didn't. Even if think there was of that. no way he could have researched that information, because I mean, the whole thing with the Pollock twins was that. I mean, obviously their mother was traumatized because her kids had died. I think that was epigenetics. Yeah. And um, so maybe she passed that on to them That's somehow. That's what I think. But the, the, the aircraft carrier, the airplane kid, I don't, that couldn't have been epigenetics. Yeah. I think that was just a random kid. It was either real, it was either real reincarnation or a hoax, an right. elaborate hoax, one of the two. Yeah. Which, you know, there's always that possibility. Yeah. But, um, and you know, that's, studying that. that's another thing. One, you know, kids say creepy shit Two, yeah. kids pick up a lot more than people think they do mm-hmm. and can parrot it back. Like, so I don't know. Like, <coughs> how would you have known the name of an obscure fighter pilot? That's true. On a air, on an aircraft carrier, knowing exactly what kind of plane that he flew and what battle he got killed. Yeah. In. See, that's kind of, that's a stretch. Stuff like that. You would be, you'd be hard pressed to find that even with internet access. And I think he was doing that before. Well, yeah, that was, a, that was a long time ago. Right. That was a long time ago. But, um, yeah, so there was this other kid, <coughs> Edward Austrian, who's also, mm-hmm. like, a pretty famous uh, reincarnation case. Um, so he had, like, a lot of throat problems all the time. And um, he said he called his throat problems his shot, or that's where I got shot. Okay. Right? And um, so when he was four, he developed a cyst in his throat, and he had to go get it uh, removed. And he said that, like, he told his mom that when he was 18, he was a soldier and he had been in the trenches and he was shot in the throat. Now, after he told his mom that, Mm -hmm. the cyst in his throat disappeared. Hmm. Like when he was four or five years old. Weird. So... You know, they don't know. And like I said, this is another random kid. He couldn't, is, but he couldn't name a name. He I don't think, well, like, this is just kind of a little paragraph here, so right. I'm not really sure if he knew the guy's name. Okay. I mean, you know, yeah, that could just be a kid saying. Another possibility is that he, uh, instead of reincarnation, maybe they're somehow psychically accessing, like, Akashic records. And they call it Akashic records. Right, right, yeah. Some kind of, something, you know, recorded in a parallel dimension. Maybe some kind of quantum information, maybe. Yeah. I wonder, can, like, every kid do it? Maybe it's, like, channeling. Yeah. I don't know. I wonder, can every kid do it when most people don't notice because kids don't, like I said, they're I can saying. remember me as a little kid, you're almost in a, in a par- in a altered state of consciousness constantly. Yeah. You're kind of in a, in a dream world slash the animal world. Yeah. Because your brain isn't functioning the same way as an adult does. Yeah. You'd see things in that they kind of have a dream-like quality sometimes. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, well, kind of. Because it was hard to tell sometimes what was imagination and what wasn't. Yeah. It's weird. I don't... Depending on how young you were. I'm talking about when I was like three, four, you know, you're... I don't really remember like a lot of my childhood, which kind of disturbs me a little bit. Really? Like I kind of remember kind of random things, Mm -hmm. but for some reason I just don't remember a lot of it. And, And the parts of it I do remember, 
I know this is going to sound weird, but the parts of it I do remember, I almost think that like, I'm the only one that experienced that. So whenever like I'm talking to any of my siblings or anything, Mm -hmm. and if one of my siblings will bring up Mm -hmm. something that I remember from being a kid, I'm like super freaked out. Like you remember that too? Yeah. Like I thought it was just me or it was just, I don't know why that is. I can remember being in a stroller out in California, going to SeaWorld, seeing uh, killer whales and this a huge killer whales jumping up out of the pool. Yeah. And uh, I remember being real close to them. I couldn't have been as close to them as I remembered it. Yeah. Though, you know, but I mean, I probably because you were so little You're and so they little. were so big. But what was weird is that, you know, I was still in a stroller. I could barely talk. And I remember understanding what a killer whale was, that it was a big fish. You know, it wasn't <laughs> a fish, of course. You know, yeah, but it was but, a huge know, aquatic like a thing. I, I remember understanding that. Yeah, that's a big monster coming out yeah. of the water. It could eat Black you. Black and like, white. Yeah. It could eat you like you were just a little nugget. I thought it was awesome, you know? They were pretty awesome. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. So a little kid can appreciate things. You it's know. weird wow. because you know what? One of the only things I remember from my childhood is my parents taking me to SeaWorld here in Florida. Really? And I had one of those like little, you know, the strollers they had that looked like little whales or fish yeah. or whatever the fuck they were supposed to be. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I could have only been two or three, I right. think. I remember I dropped my binky that day. <laughs> it fell. Yeah, it fell. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know how we, you know you know when you're in the stroller and your feet are down on that little uh, it's like a little wire grid. Yeah, it fell and it went down through those th- through through the wire grid and each my mom kept pushing me. Oh no! And I was going there it goes there it goes no no. <laughs> little did I know I, when I, I got old enough said mom remember the time I, I dropped my binky she goes oh yeah we I remember that he goes I saw you drop it then I just kept on walking because you were getting too old for a binky. So that was how I broke so the binky. So she left. Yeah, she says no more binky for him. He doesn't need a binky. Oh my god! And that was the end of binkies. Harsh. No, it was just how you did things. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was too old for a binky. I evidently I was maybe two, three. She, I mean, in those days, I guess you know, you're too old for a binky. Because you know, back in those so days, they always... binky was lost by just natural, <laughs> <laughs> by, by natural, natural means. means. I dropped it, and that was it. <laughs> did they did they tell you that you couldn't uh, that if you did that too long that you would have buck teeth? I don't remember. Yeah, see, that's what, that's what my grandma always used to say. I don't remember. But see, I didn't. I didn't have a boy. We call it a pacifier, right. but um. Yeah, I call it a binky. You weirdo. Binky. <laughs> <laughs> you weirdo. That's how they did it back then, man. <laughs> Dropped it, and that's it. There goes no, no, my binky. Ah. <laughs> But what was funny is that I remember my mom said that I'd forgotten all about it back uh, uh, 20 minutes later. I'd forgotten all about it. Well, yeah, but you still remember kid, it I remembered it, but, you know, I remember it right. happening, but she said that I forgot all about Binky's 20 minutes later. That's so funny. Never, never did again. <laughs> ah, come on, this is paranormal. You're killing me. We're You're doing killing paranormal me. weird stuff. We're talking about Binky's. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, we're talking about memories. It's okay. a memory show. Yeah, it's a memory thing. It's a memory show. But so, um... <laughs> All right. So basically, I mean, I don't know. We're like I said, we're talking about Pollock twins. Apparently, yeah. they grew up and uh, they were quite normal afterward. Um, I guess they're still alive, but I don't know. It's just I don't know. That creeps me out. It, the the thing that creeps me out the most is that fucking blood coming out of her eyes thing. Yeah, but little kids say weird stuff. You know what I mean? I used to, I we used to say weird stuff like that all the time. That's true. Uh, you know. And adults read into it because they moralize everything. When you're a little kid, you don't have a moral system like that. Yeah. You're like a cat or a dog or a, a monkey. Yeah. You know, you're kind of animalistic. So, you, yeah, blood. Yeah, we're going to eat him. I'm going to eat him. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, we used, to, we, used to jo- we used to joke around, you know, me and yeah. my little, little buddies. Yeah, we're going to eat you. You know. <laughs> You know, that would terrify adults, you know. Well, nowadays they'd be like, oh my God, he's no. going to be a serial killer. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be a serial killer. <laughs> Which I guess, well, here's the shitty thing about that is like every now and then, they you do. do grow up to be a serial yeah, killer. Right. You yeah. don't know. You don't know. Yeah, it's funny. Like which one it's going to be. You don't know which one it's going to be. But, um, <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, do, do you have anything else you would like to add about reincarnation? Do you think you were a reincarnation of anybody? Well, according according to my parents, you know, if I were possibly a reincarnation of anybody who had been my grandfather. Yeah. But no, I think it was epigenetics. I do remember some things that had my grandfather in him. I never met him. Right. You know, he died before I was born. But I think I may have inherited some memories from my dad. Yeah. But like I said, they they mostly kind of fade away as you get older. Yeah. I remember the tractor. But I had never seen a tractor. I never ridden a tractor at the time I was saying that. 
That's but just I can hilarious. vaguely remember the tractor. Yeah. I think I even remember what color it was. I think it was kind of blue. Yeah. It looked like something out of the 60s or 50s. You know, like pressed steel construction kind of yeah. top or steel construction. You know, it wasn't, wasn't a modern tractor. I remember it. And I remember falling over. And I remember being a little kid or... I don't remember if I was the little kid or if I was the adult. So that's the thing. Yeah. It, 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 it's just weird. <laughs> I think it was just some kind of an inherited memory through my dad. Yeah. Yeah. Man, wouldn't that be something? See, that's a, that kind of bothers me. Now I kind of wish that I like remembered weird shit like that from my childhood. And like I said, I can't really remember hardly anything. The only reason why I remember it is because my parents kept reminding me of, of it. Right. That I had said that. And I'm going to go, yeah, I remember that. As I was, you know, my mother yeah. would ask me again, do you remember this, that? And I said, yeah, I remember saying that. Huh. You know, it was that kind of stuff. So you never really lost the memory because they kept reminding me. Because they kept reminding me of it. Yeah. Had they not reminded me of it, I would have forgotten it. Yeah. I only remember stuff that they took pictures of, honestly. Okay. You know. Right. That's, that's the only reason I remember that SeaWorld thing is because they took a picture of me in the little... <clears throat> I, was an only, I was an only child, so I would say things, you know, and it would trip my mom out and she would remember it. You know how when, I guess right. when, when you have, when you have a mother who's only had one child... They think the child is strange, I guess, if the child does something strange. Well, yeah, strange, because that's remember, like your first That's their first experience, one. So you that's know? your first experience as a mom, so they remember everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? It had I had siblings, they probably would, would have said crazy stuff too, and it wouldn't have been made into a big deal. She probably wouldn't have kept questioning them. But she'd question me over and over again. She'd question me weird about weird shit. Like, you know, she'd give me a lifesaver lollipop, you know? With, yeah. With the whole, and, I, and I'd eat it, and she goes, okay, it's gone now, but where'd the hole go? You know, oh my like, God, my grandpa used to say, yeah, that. where'd the hole go? You know, <laughs> but I was, like, I was wah, little, wah, you know, wah. I was like five. I was just like, there can't be a hole without a, a thing on the side. Mom, because, like, oh, you finally figured that one out. That took me a couple of times to figure that one out. So she like blew your mind. She right? blew my what mind. Like, what? Yeah, it was, oh it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there Mom, can't be a now hole. She, you're like laying awake yeah. in your crib going, where'd yeah. the hole go? Where is it? Actually, I was in a car seat. <laughs> in the car seat. I was in a car seat <laughs> next to her driving to San Diego. And I'd look out the window with, you know, candy and stuff. He goes, yeah, it's gone, but where'd the hole go? Where's the hole? You you know what? Since we're talking about memories, you need to tell the story about how you got drunk when you were five in the yard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> me and two of my buddies, you know, they were the same age as me. We were probably about six, five, six. We grabbed a big old one-gallon jug of that Annie Green Springs wine. Because our moms were making wine coolers out of that. This is out in California back in the 70s where you couldn't buy a pre-made wine cooler. You just... Got some cheap wine and you mixed it with Seven Up. That was your wine cooler. Well, they liked it, so we figured it must be good. There wasn't, it wasn't, you know, they weren't around. All three of us grabbed that one big, one gallon glass jug, and we were out in the front yard just drink, just down in that. And cars were going by, <laughs> and they were beeping the horns. They were loving it. We were like giving them Go the thumbs kids. up. Yeah, we're like, yeah. All three of us trying to drink that big old jug. <laughs> It didn't last long, though. You know, we probably, between the three of us, maybe drank uh, about four cups of it. But that, you know, we that's, were hammered. Yeah. We were hammered. Well, yeah, because you were little. That's the way it was back in the 70s, though. Yeah, now the 70s. there'd have been a lawsuit today. But they well, let, yeah, now they, they'd take your kids away. Yeah, but, you know, back in the, we, we were hardcore. We were like feral kids back in the 70s. Yeah. 70s, you know, that, that that's... That made you grow up to be a man. I mean, shit, we would go down to the we would go down to the flood control system in California. You know, they showed it in the movie Grease. You know, it looked like a big. Yeah. Uh, they they filmed Terminator there. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a big storm drain. It's got a little river down the middle and big uh, concrete slopes that go up the side. You know, we used to go there. We used to, we used to hang out there. There it wasn't far from my house. Those were everywhere out in California, and. Uh, Man, we would make torches and steal gasoline from from the garage, from our dad's garage, make torches and go down into those tunnels because we saw that fifties movie them, you know, about the giant ants. About the giant ants, yeah. And the giant ants were in there. Well, so you had to take care of that. Shit. Yeah, so we'd go in there, you know, with torches and flashlights, and we were young. We were seven, eight. Yeah. You know, kids don't grow up that way now, but you know, this was in the age of evil Knievel, man. We all wanted to be. Well, yeah, in the 70s, and I mean, in the 70s yeah. and early 80s, I mean, shit, me and my little brother, we used to just run around in the woods and blow stuff up. I would put my dad's motorcycle helmet on and tie a beach towel around my neck like a cape, put my mom's dish gloves on, <laughs> you know, those big yellow dish gloves, <laughs> big rubber dish gloves, and yeah. jump off the of t- top of the roof of the house because I thought I was evil Knievel. <laughs> <laughs> 
We all wanted to be daredevils. Well, yeah. Yeah, it was awesome times. Okay, now did now going back to your wine story, didn't your yeah. mom take you to the hospital after that? No, 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 no. That's when I was about two, and I drank those, uh, drank that big old bottle of aftershave. Oh, right, right, right. Because it, it was uh, pretty. It was green. Yeah, it was good, of course, and it smelled good. So I drank that. I grabbed my dad's <laughs> aftershave. It was Aqua Velva. Yeah, I remember that shit. Yeah, it, it looked pretty. Like, glunk, 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 glunk. And the doctor <laughs> said, "Oh, yeah, he's hammered. Now he'd be all right. Send him back. You know, go back oh home." Oh my god! Nowadays yeah. they'd be calling child protective services. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I'd get into everything. Yeah. If it was a pretty color and it smelled good, I'd drink it. God, I can't imagine. I mean, you know, your poor mother. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No. Yeah, you're. Yeah, you're. Uh, you're I was wild. a little hellion. That's yeah. right. I was. I was a good kid. I was a good kid. No. I was kind of quiet. Well, until I got a little bit older. This show's going too long. All right. Anyway. This, going, yeah. <laughs> this show's going too long. Look at the time. All right. So okay. uh, we're done talking about yeah. memories and shit now. And, uh, getting off topic. Getting off topic. That's okay. Yeah. It's it's fun to <laughs> digress sometimes. It's not that long. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. So um, be sure to tune in next week and subscribe to our YouTube channel, 13 O'Clock Podcast. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Yeah. Um, et cetera and so forth. Just search 13 o'clock podcast and find us. And that's the end of the show. Bye. Bye.